This video is intended to be an overview to give you a informa some information about what we're trying to achieve in this blog post with this particular architectural design and to give you an overview of how you could use this and, and why we'd want to do this. If you want more details, please read the blog post in its entirety. There are accompanying screenshots and videos to show how we actually go about implementing some of what you're about to see in this overview video. So. In this particular instance, we're wanting to implement a hardware abstraction inside a DQMH module. Let's deal with the hardware abstraction first. So within our power supply project, uh, so the hardware that we're going to be looking at uh, in this particular example is a power supply. It's a common instrument that most of us have used, so we wanted to use that for the, um, for the example. So within our power supply project, the hardware abstraction is implemented inside our power supply driver folder. And in there, we have a number of items. The first thing that we have is a power supply class. This is a LabVIEW class, and we've implemented methods that we think are common to most power supplies. So for example, with most power supplies, you would want to configure a current limit, switch the output state on or off, configure the voltage level, and maybe even measure the current being drawn. So these are typical functions, typical methods that we would want to uh, perform on our power supply. Now, this is a parent implementation and it's what's often re referred to as an abstract class in that it's used to define the class structure, but it is not the intention that we would call this class at runtime. Uh, indeed, these VIs contain no code other than one thing we do like to do is to create an error ring. So we create an error ring inside of a wrapper VI. We call it implementation error. Let's have a look at that. So here we have a message saying override error, abstract class called. That's because it is our intention that this parent class would never be called in practice. So if we inadvertently called it, we want to know about it. OK, so we have our over uh, our parent methods for configuring the current limit, etc. And if we inadvertently call this parent, then we get an, it returns an error. The, pri the class private data for our power supply class contains just the visa resource name, the address, if you will, of the instrument that we're wishing to communicate with. And we've got a couple of accessors down here for getting and setting the visa resource name. So that's our parent implementation, and we use that to define what our power supply is capable of doing. In addition to the parent, we've provided two overrides. Again, we've got a very similar structure with these virtual folders and we've implemented methods which are likely to change from one power supply to the from one power supply to another. What I mean by that is that both the Agilent and the TTI are likely to be able to configure the current limit. However, the specific commands that need to be sent to the power supply are likely to be different between them. So it's typical that we would have different implementations for the different instruments being used. Both of these classes inherit from the power supply class. That allows us to use a, fe a great feature in LabVIEW called Dynamic Dispatch, so we can write all of our code around the parent implementation and then, at runtime, call one of these child implementations. Let's have a look inside the Agilent class. Now, inside these VIs, we all we've provided is a dialog box that shows the class and the method that was called. We've done this because, unfortunately, I don't have an Agilent or a TTI power supply to hand, and it's unlikely that you will. But we wanted you to be able to see the code and to see how we could call different implementations of power supply at runtime. So at the minute, we're just popping up dialog boxes. Here's where you could add code to control an actual instrument, should you wish to use this as a template. So I mentioned dynamic dispatch, and that's the final thing that I'd like to show you in our hardware abstraction layer. If we go back to our power supply class, the final piece is this VI called load class from file on disk. This implements something called the factory pattern. Put simply, it allows us to supply a path to a LabVIEW class on disk and return that object back to LabVIEW. So it allows us to programmatically, given a path, select a LabVIEW class on disk and load the object. So that allows us to select at runtime which implementation we wish to use.
So that's our factory pattern implementation and our hardware abstraction. The next part is to look at the DQMH module itself. So let's look inside power supply module. As you may know from previous blog posts, when creating a DQMH module, you not only create the module, but also an API tester so that you can test the public API of that module. Let's have a quick look at the API tester and then we'll see it running. So our API tester allows us to run, new, uh, run a new module, show its front panel, and then interact with its public API uh, setting um, values, for example. If we then look at our DQMH module, let's have a look at it. It's meant to look something like a power supply. So we've got some visual indication that we've made uh, changes to voltage level, current limit, uh, the current being drawn, the output state, for example. If we look at the block diagram, we can see that we have implemented <coughs> methods for uh, the fee the some of the functionality that we saw in our hardware abstraction layer. So for example, setting the current limit, setting the voltage level, the output state, etc. If we have a look at the first of those methods, setting the visa resource, we can see that when we set when we fire the public API event for setting the visa resource, that um, event is received in our event handling loop. And then the visa resource is passed into the message handling loop where it's written to the uh, class private data of the power supply class. We have an instance of the power supply class being contained, being stored in this shift register that's passed around. So we're writing the visa resource name to the class private data uh, for the power supply class. The next method that we might want to fire might be the setting of the power supply type or the power supply class. Here, when the event is fired, either from the API tester or from a LabVIEW application or indeed from a test stand sequence, the event returns the path to the class on disk. And here's where we've made a call to our factory pattern VI that I showed you earlier. So we pass that path into our VI from our power supply driver class and then using the factory pattern, we return the LabVIEW object. So now we've returned the LabVIEW object re relating to the specific power supply that we wish to use and we've populated the class private data with the visa reference. The last thing that remains is to actually call the methods on our power supply class. <clears throat> If we look at setting the current limit, for example, as I mentioned earlier, when we wrote the DQMH module, we made calls to the parent class. So here I've got the parent class power supply.lv class configure current limit. However, if I double click this, I can see that actually I have two possible child class implementations that can override that. And depending on which class was loaded using our factory pattern, I'll either implement the TTI or the Agilent implementation of that particular method. Let's see that in action then. Let's close this. Go back to our API tester, run our tester, and then let's run a new module instance. We can see it there. Let's see its front panel. So now I can set the visa resource name and we can see that it's reflected in the front panel of our DQMH module. It's time to specify a class. So let's specify the Agilent implementation. We can now interact and call the public methods. So in this instance, I want to change the current limit to 0.55. And we can see that I called the Agilent implementation and I called the configure current limit method and my well, 0.56 is what I set and there it is on the front panel. Let's go ahead and change the voltage level to 0.4. We can see that I called the configure voltage level method of the Agilent class and there's my voltage level set to 0.4. I could also turn the output on. Now, I mentioned about dynamic dispatch. Let's change the implementation that I want to use. Let's go back to using the TTI. Now, when I make a change, you can see we've called the TTI 330LP implementation, but called the same method within that class. So I mentioned we can use 
both the API tester to interact with our DQMH module, but we can also use a LabVIEW application. So here we've got a very brief LabVIEW application that simply makes calls on the public API methods of our DQMH module. So we can see here we've got the parent implementations being called and we're calling the set power supply class, the setting of the current. But we know that at, at runtime, we're actually going to call different child implementations. So let's go ahead and select the Agilent implementation. And run that and we can see that the Agilent implementation was called. And then just to show that that still works with the TTI, we call the TTI methods just by calling the public API methods of our DQMH module. The final step is to show that Testand can make calls to those very same public API methods as well. So here we have a very, very simple Testand sequence. If you do use Testand and you want to use this, be sure to change the configuration file to point to wherever you've extracted the power supply driver to be on your specific disk. So here we have a simple test and sequence that's calling the very same API methods that the LabVIEW demonstration I just showed was. And now we can execute that test and sequence. And we can see, in this case, it's calling the Agilent implementation. So from test and we're calling the exact same public API methods of our DQMH module and our DQMH module is implementing a hardware abstraction layer. To find out more, have a look at the blog post in detail. Thanks.